Hello and welcome to our video on the study of highlight clipping using the Rodiger histogram. It is useful to know how to determine the practical clipping point for at least two reasons. The most common is that we need to know the clipping point to determine the headroom and headlights, and tune the camera settings to provide a more reliable overexposure warning, blinkies. Another is dynamic range analysis, signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, and measurements of utilized well capacity. Full well capacity, FWC, is seldom used in modern cameras. Different cameras, even if based on the same sensor, may render extreme highlights around the clipping point differently, and differently even with different values of clipping points depending on the ISO setting. It is important to recognize the look and calculate the practical clipping point, which is not always the same as the maximum raw value. Here, we will try to demonstrate the typical looks of the histogram of the clipping zone. Any curved metal or glass surface is a good source of specular highlights. In our case, this is what we want, as we will be analyzing how the clipping exhibits itself on shots like these. A shiny metal ball, or any metal bowl, is also a good target to inspect highlights and clipping. Having a dark background behind the shiny surfaces helps isolate highlights on the histogram. If you are anticipating performing dynamic range analysis, having a black drop in the same shot saves time. You can make a black truck yourself, or use the data color spider cube as we did below. We are going to open these shots, made by different cameras, in raw digger. The OVEXP checkmark in the display section causes a red overlay to appear over the blown out highlights, similar to the blinkies in camera overexposure indication. And look at their histograms. To look at histogram structure in more detail, let's switch on the log scale on the y-axis and for starters turn on linear x-axis and check auto for both the x-axis and the y-axis range. For an even more detailed view, we reduce the displayed range along the x-axis so that it will include, more or less, only the highlights. Switching off auto in the linear x-axis section, we can set the left margin of the range close to the structure in the highlights. Now we can set the bin size to 1. We will be referring to this set of actions as zoom in on the highlight portion of the histogram. For extreme shots with blown out highlights, the right side of the histogram usually takes one of the following typical shapes. 1. The Empire State Building, as displayed in log scale y axis mode. A typical example would be Sony C RAW ARW2. 2. A bell as displayed in log-scale y-axis mode. A typical example would be Canon. For those wondering why we classified this as a bell-shaped rather than an empire state, this is why. 3. A wave hitting the wall, as displayed in log-scale y-axis mode. A typical example would be Sigma. Now we are zooming in on the highlights. 4. A spike, as displayed in log scale y axis mode. A typical example would be Pentax, Leica, or Samsung. Zooming in again. 5. A hybrid structure, as displayed in log scale y axis mode. A typical example would be shots from Fujifilm. Some cameras, such as Canon and a few Panasonic cameras, have a certain peculiarity. Their maximum, that is a clipping point, changes depending on the ISO setting. Take for instance this particular histogram of a shot from Panasonic GM1 at ISO 125. This seems normal in and of itself, but if one were to take a look at the shot at ISO 400, it becomes plainly evident that the maximum has shifted at least 500 levels to the right and the bell-shaped curve is no longer there. In certain cases, the blown out highlight histogram structure will not be aligned vertically, meaning that the center values of the structure will be different for different channels. Most often, this is the indication of color channels, white balance, preconditioning, like the one Nikon has been using on their cameras since D2X.
D5300 and D3300 are two recent exceptions. This is how it looks in full range, and this is how it looks if we zoom in closer. We see that the maximums are different for different channels. Cameras where color channel preconditioning is used are recognizable by the regular one pixel gap in the histograms of the red and blue channels. Sometimes, additionally, they have different clipping points for red, blue, and both green channels, as seen on the screen. This is because of how the preconditioning is implemented. It is digital multiplication of the data in the red and blue channels by a number slightly higher than 1, applied before the data is written into a raw file. Which value should be considered a practical maximum? The conservative approach is to consider the value that starts the overexposure structure to be the maximum, as the higher values are mostly pattern and processing noise. For hit the wall and spike types of highlight structures, it is the spike itself. However, for something like we have here, where it is not a pure hit the wall, the clipping starts at 3935. So, if we return to the histogram shown for Sony ASR, we will see that here, the peak value is 15,860, while the bulk of the structure starts at 15,635. Now we can go into preferences, and following the conservative approach, enter the second number to overexposure detection section in manual level all channels field. Note, if your camera is one of those with white balance preconditioning, you will need to enter per channel values in manual per channel selection R, G, B, G2 fields. Now, we can hit apply and inspect the main view. If you have done everything above correctly, you will have a very accurate display of the overexposed areas. On a normally exposed image, you will have at least a few overexposed pixels in every major specular highlights, if there are such highlights in the scene, of course. If some highlights which are specular in nature do not have overexposed pixels, even if looking at 100% magnification, the image should be considered as underexposed. As was already mentioned, curved metal and glass surfaces are the first candidates for these specular highlights, as well as all of the sources of light in the image. And two final notes for those of you who decide to experiment with your cameras. It is easier to recognize and analyze the specular highlights if the area is large enough and placed over a much darker background. If you are using a full frame camera or a medium format camera, place the specular highlights slightly off center to avoid the areas of technological stitches to have a better view of the histogram. Different parts of the stitch sensor often have different characteristics and the histogram is not so easy to read if those are mixed. To see how the sensor is stitched, let's take a fully blown out shot Exaggerate the contrast we use in per channel black level settings and preferences. And inspect the displayed structure. Though the difference between the stitch tasks is very small, it is obvious that the left part of the sensor is more uniform and better suited for analysis.